How have you guys been enjoying the Fruit of the Spirit so far? We've gone over the intro and peace, and it's just been already so life-giving for me. And I'm just encouraged again, like what we plant grows and what we water grows. And like I said, I'm already encouraged with the little bit that we've done so far. And I don't know, it just has really moved me. So anyway, let me start uh, praying. Father, thank you so much for meeting us here today. I'm asking for your presence, Father, and for your words to come. I pray for open hearts, a tilled field, as it were. (laughs) I pray for the soil of our hearts to be ready to receive the word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, last week was peace with Nico, which was so good. It, there was so much. I was like going through the notes, like, what do I pull? Like, what are the main things? And the three main things I got were wholeness, security, and identity. And as I was, uh, today is patience. I should have started with that. So we're doing growing patience. But as I'm researching and doing this stuff, I'm seeing how much overlap. And I think you guys will find too, there's a lot of overlap in a lot of these fruits of the spirit. So with patience, Uh, The biblical usage definitions in Greek are as follows. Patience, endurance, constancy, steadfastness, perseverance, long-suffering, suffering suffering for a long time. How many of y'all know about that? And this is the one that really, like, caught me. Slowness in avenging wrongs, right? We (laughs) Listen, I have three kids, and sometimes... I mean, I know you guys think they're perfect little angels. No. But there are times when they do something wrong, and sometimes I react in patience, and sometimes I don't. (laughs) So that really caught me, the slowness in avenging wrongs. So we grow, we want to develop and foster these fruits of the Spirit, and we want to see how Christ uh, showed them, how, how it how it worked through him, right? God's got to be the most patient. I mean, he is so patient. I was just like thinking, thinking with Jesus, like, I mean, any one of the disciples, it's like that, that took every bit of him, (laughs) all of the God part of him to have patience for their stupidity and for the Pharisees' stupidity. And of course, I was thinking of him on the cross and even just going to the cross. You know how much patience? At, at any point, he could have been like, stop. <laughs> you, you know who I am, you know? He had to be patient. He, he had to go through that process. I want to start with Exodus uh, 34, 6. And I love this. Um, I never really caught this. This is when God is talking to Moses. And it's God talking to God about God. (laughs) I love that. So verse five says, then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. (laughs) I just love that. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God who is slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. And I loved in the uh, New Living Translation, it says, a thousand generations. Maintaining love to a thousand generations. Generation after generation after generation. It goes back to the, that slowness in avenging wrongs, right? He's compassionate and gracious. Okay? Now I want to go to James 1.19. It says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, right? Slow to become angry, having patience. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, right? We need to plant the stuff in our heart which can save you, which it does. (laughs) These are words of life. And it's a lifestyle. I know we spoke about that during the intro. It's, this isn't something that 
you know, we're like, let's practice being patient today. And it's not set it and forget it. It's something that we have to walk out. People and things are going to annoy us every day. You know this. I know this. It's something that we've got to get planted deep down. I was thinking, you know, for myself, what does it feel like in my body when I'm trying to be patient? And um, probably two or three years ago, it was during COVID, um, I started doing yoga, and it was for other purposes, but um, what I grew to really enjoy about yoga is the breathing. There's, it's very intentional, at least the instructors I was doing, um, with breathing and connecting to your breath and feeling grounded. Uh, so then from there, I'm thinking, okay, where, where else have I felt this? Um, and I, I was brought back to our first birth class. Okay, so we're preparing to give birth, scared out of my mind, don't know what to expect. And so they have all these exercises to help you prepare for this really big thing. So <laughs> what they did is they gave you um, an ice cube to hold. You hold it in your hand for a full minute. I encourage you to try it. It's a lot more painful than it sounds. Like at first you're like, we can do this. And by 20 seconds we're like, oh, that hurts, right? And and the instructor's like, just breathe through it. Breathe through it. Find your breath. Find your breath. So it's this connecting, right, that helps us to uh, be slow to react. It's not just anger, I feel. It's, it's, be, it's we need to be slow in our reactions. That's being patient, too, right? <laughs> along that line, um, or, or along the grounding line, uh, <laughs> kind of a funny story. So we went to Disneyland last year. Great fun. We went to the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy ride, which is the old... Uh, Tower of Terror. So, you know, it brings you up crazy high and then just drops you and goes up and down. And my, my siblings and Mika wanted to go, and I was like, no, 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 that looks really scary. And so um, my brother Doug went, and he came off, and he was like, I'm glad I went, but I'm not doing it again. That was, that was too much. And, uh, and he, he kept saying, yeah, just it was weird to feel that, um, you know, like that weightlessness. So he was like, so I kept going, like, like stomping on the ground, like even though the whole car was moving, he's still stomping on the ground. And so um, somehow my niece convinced me to go on the ride, and I hated it. I cried the whole time. The picture at the top, I'm like, <laughs> but I remembered after that point, I'm shaking in the car. I'm literally, cr- I'm crying, and I'm stomping that floor, and I'm like, I'm trying to feel the ground. Like, there's ground beneath me. I feel the ground beneath me. And I, I ha- that's been a, like a touch point. Like, even in the times where it feels like you are free-falling, you still got ground beneath you. You've got to connect to that. As Christ is our firm foundation, he's, <laughs> he's always there, even when it feels like we're free-falling. So as I'm thinking about this, about grounding, what does it mean to feel grounded and slow to anger, slow to reaction, to be patient, to build that endurance and connecting to my breath. I, I was just thinking, like, if we can't, as a body, connect with our breath and our patience in our physical bodies, how can we do it in the supernatural? Like, we've got to be able to calm ourselves <laughs> And build that patience, build that, um, that stamina. As Miko and I were going through the different fruits of the Spirit, I felt like I should do patience because I, I looked at our life and I said, we've kind of joked about this before, well, everything that has happened in our life takes at least two to four years longer than we'd like. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I know a little bit about patience. This started with us dating. We dated for two years, going great. Started courting, or, you know, whatever. I, I made me go talk to my dad. <laughs> I was like, we're courting now. So we knew we wanted to get married at two years. Then four years later, we get married, which is really hard. <laughs> when you're trying to stay pure, that's hard. Then we got married, and we thought, okay, well, in two years, we'll start a family. 
plus two years later than that, Hat started having kids. Oh, now we're going to get a house. This is going to be great. Uh, how long was that? Almost five years after we got married? So thank, by the grace of God, my parents and Miko's mom, all our parents were very gracious and helped us out during that time. But that grew pa- patience. Through all of those circumstances, there were so many times where I was like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I want to get to the, to the finish line. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to have a house. And the hardest for me out of all the, well, the marriage was difficult, but I would say getting a house really hit me. And I remember my friend, uh, we were talking about it one time, and she was like, how are you doing with it? Because I was really struggling. And I said, it just feels like I'm falling out of the sky. <laughs> have you ever felt like that? You're like, I have no control over this. I can't speed up time. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't change the position. I can't make more money magically. I can't, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And um, the Lord really challenged me because as I was in my mind free falling, it's like God is here. I was free falling like this, my back to him. I'm just like, while I'm falling, you've abandoned me. And the Lord challenged me, as he often does, and he's like, are you falling with intention? And I'm like, what does that mean? I'm falling. (laughs) How do you fall with intention? And he's like, are you talking to me? Are you trusting me? Is it a trust fall or is it a blind fall? Do you just throw yourself off an airplane and grab your Jansport backpack, not the not a parachute of Jesus. That's what I did. (laughs) It's finding where he's at in the middle of it. Because so often we want to speed things along. And we're like, you know, from the platform before we jump off, we're like, Jesus, we know you're here. And we jump off and we're like, we know you're down there. But like, do you trust him in the middle of it? In the middle of the fall when you're like, I'm free falling. (laughs) It feels like my stomach's in my mouth and I'm just falling. But that's what patience is. It, It wouldn't be patience if you're, you know, just if I'm just stepping down. Jesus, you're up here and you're down here now. Yeah, okay. That's not patience. Hmm. Patience is active. It's not something that you just, again, in my example where I'm turning my back to God, okay, I'm just falling, okay. We'll see, you might catch me, I don't know. We'll see. It's active. During those times, like I said, in the middle of it, it's going after him and keeping that dialogue open. It's asking for those breadcrumbs of hope and faith. Like we sang earlier, Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's the promise. It's not, uh, maybe, Maybe if you hope and trust and wait on him, maybe that'll happen. No, you get stronger through him. Your strength is renewed when we wait, and it doesn't feel like it sometimes. And it's, it's almost like in those times where you're not feeling it the most is when you need him the most. And that's when it can be the hardest. Like when I'm in that spot sometimes, I'm not trying to talk to anybody. I may be feeling shame or just I don't want to I don't want to open that up. I don't want to open that up, but that's the time that you need to. So this is kind of the the here and now of patience, right? Grounding, finding our breath, being uh, keeping this open dialogue with Jesus, right? We also need to remember This may shock you that God is bigger than us and he has a different perspective than us. He's above it all, right? 
So he, does, he sees our timeline, but he's also outside of time. So he sees all these things we don't see. We may not ever see. I don't know. I hope we do, but we might not. I don't know. And we need to remember that he is God and we're us, right? We need to <laughs> remember that he's at the helm of it all, right? Okay, I want to start with James 5, 7 through 11. It's kind of long. Give me a moment. Got it all printed out this time. <laughs> okay, it says, Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. I'm going to pause right there. That's so powerful. It's in the natural, and it's so powerful. Like, how many of you guys like to garden? <laughs> and you don't plant the seed on Monday and go out on Friday and get upset that there's nothing there. Right? Like, we understand that there's a season. Like, we understand that if we don't water something, it doesn't grow. We understand, we understand these things. Okay, verse 8, you too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. And to me, that's, that's harking back to the slowness to anger, slowness to avenging wrongs. Verse 10, brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance, which we'll be talking about Job in a couple weeks, and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. And I love, how, I love this. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Again, in Exodus, that's what he said. He's compassionate and gracious. It's part of his character. It's who he is. It doesn't change. Back then, it's what he said then is the same. Now is the same. It will be. Never going to change. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to go to Luke twelve twenty two. So the Lord knows us has known everything, has known everything, knows everything, will know everything, all of the things, right? And we, <laughs> in our humanness, lack patience and trust in him. Um, I was just struck by this. This, this week has been tough, y'all. It's been a tough one. It's been an emotional week. And um, this verse just kept coming up in the sentiment, and um, it's Luke twelve twenty two. And it's, I'm like, when as I was reading it and meditating on it, I'm like, this. Uh, let me. I'm just gonna read it, okay? I feel like I'm stumbling. Then the Lord said to his disciples, "Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food." and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? 27. Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? I feel like a lot of times we get impatient. Again, when we, we want something, good, bad, or indifferent, we want something, we want to hurry up, and we get caught up in worrying about it about everything. We've got to get into this habit 
of giving those worries and giving those things to the Lord. The third place I want to take us is to Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for everything. Again, this overarching picture that God knows and sees everything. So he has... He sees the timeline. He sees where we're supposed to go, when and how, right? As we begin to walk that out, that's, that's what builds that trust. We begin to wait on the Lord and he's renewing our strength. The more we do that, the more it's like lifting weights. Again, it's your, your endurance. You're like, I can, I can carry this. I can wait a little longer because I know I can trust in you. The more he does it, the more you can walk in that and walk in confidence. So Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. In this season, as we are intentionally as a body planting these seeds, we need to also individually be asking the Lord, what's my role? What's my job? Like, what season are you in? I feel like I get so caught up sometimes in forgetting God's timing and trusting in that. Because it can be really hard in that middle. It can be really hard. So we've got to, again, be intentional about finding our grounding, remembering that Christ is the rock on which we stand. He doesn't leave, He doesn't move. We need to find our breath. And be continually renewing our mind. As I was thinking about this, I'm like, it's the renewing of our mind. It's the renewing of our mind that brings transformation, that brings change, that brings all of these things that we're praying for. Uh, what jumps out at me the most, patience is endurance. And we know that it's not a sprint. If our life was a sprint, we would approach it differently. But our life is a marathon. And anyone that does track or knows of track understands that you train differently. Your body looks different. You breathe differently. You run differently if you're doing a marathon versus a 100-yard dash. And you talked about we need to be in the midst of having our patience. There's an intentionality there. We need to be grounded in Christ. And you kept on saying, catch your breath. You need to catch your breath. And everything I heard was, what does that mean? What, What would that be spiritually, catching our breath and I put it to you, catching our breath is finding that space with Holy Spirit to listen, to receive, to be strengthened, 
to build trust, catching our breath, the breath of God. So if the ministry team would, would come up. Um, I want to challenge you guys. If in this message you were hearing or you've been feeling like you need endurance, that that's what is missing, that you're needing to catch your breath, that there's a circumstance or situation in your life and you're saying, I don't know if I can make this. I don't know if I can keep on going. If you need endurance, I just ask you to, to come up and receive prayer. If you listen to this message and you said to yourself, I just need to, that reconnection. I just need to get grounded again. I just need to, to reconnect with my foundation. I encourage you to get prayer this morning. The ministry team's open for you guys. And if there's any situation in your life, if there's anything going on, get prayer. That's why we're here. So, Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing. We thank you so much for what you've done. And I just pray right now that you would teach us that trust is active, it's intentional, but it's also out of our control. So teach us how to trust fall, to fall with the intention and the posture of trusting you. In Jesus' name, amen.